Welcome everybody to the Corval Live Action Webinar. I'm Fiona Phillips, Marketing Director here at Corval and your moderator for today's live webinar titled Empowering the Next Generation of Network Managers. To tackle this topic, I'm pleased to introduce today's expert speakers. John K. Smith, Co-Founder and CTO of Live Action and Scott Pierbolt, Director of Sales Engineering and Professional Services Americas Corval. Today's live and interactive webinar will run for 40 minutes followed by 10 minutes for Q&A. To that end, let me draw your attention to the question box on your control panel to the right of your screen. Please submit your questions at any time and we'll get them answered in the order they are received. So let's get started. Over to you, John. Thank you, Fiona. Uh, thank you everybody for joining our webinar. I'm John K. Smith from Live Action. Joining me is Scott Pierbolt from Corval. And this is the agenda for our webinar today. So we'll talk a little bit about the digital landscape and the challenges that you're seeing and how Corvo and Live Action can help you uh, with network analytics and visibility. And then we'll do a deep dive into showing you some of our integrated capabilities and a demo. And we'll wrap this up with some Q&A. But just to set the context, you know, the IT landscape is getting very complex. And you're seeing issues with you know, the digital transformation for the digital enterprise. Network is becoming a critical piece of that. And we're seeing hybrid cloud where there's AWS, Google, Azure, you know, connecting with private clouds. End user experience is critical for the digital enterprises and making sure that application performance is, is working properly. And then we have connected workplaces like Skype, Slack, Messenger applications, Snapchat, UC, voice over IP. And then from microservices perspective, you know, you have containers coming and going, uh, and then SD-WAN from the uh, WAN aspect, we see dynamic automated agile transports and people leveraging multiple transports uh, where they can. And the cyber threats, the continuous threats that you see, advanced, advanced persistent threats and cyber threats. And mobility and IoT, so increased number of devices, see more video, social messaging, the traffic just increasing. And then big data, so a lot of machine learning analytics happening in your data center, a lot of east-west traffic. So the complexity is, is growing and you have ephemeral services as well. So the digital transformation is you know, creating new demands on the network. Um, the end user experience is very critical. So whether it's applications for internal users or external customers, and it runs the gamut, right? So Skype messaging, UC voice video, but also your website and applications. So you know these affect the DevOps team, the line of business, and this covers all the verticals, whether you're in banking, finance, retail, services, or education or government, you know, user experience is key. And we see hybrid IT uh, increasing the distributed nature of the business applications. So whether you're leveraging multi-cloud like AWS and Azure and connecting back to private cloud and plethora of software as a service. And it's becoming difficult to gain visibility into this network. Uh, you have the data center branch, campus, WAN and wireless. So the breadth of coverage becomes important. And then you're running this with you know, software-defined uh, WAN or access or software-defined networking in the data center. So the, the fabric is becoming more, more complex. And there's the inevitability of the cyber attack. So it's not if you're gonna get attacked, but really when. So knowing when it's attack, investigating the forensics and making sure that you're working with the security teams. So at the end of the day, the network still gets blamed. Um, mainly because the network is so central and a critical piece to connect the digital enterprise. And sometimes the least understood portion and that has the least visibility is the one that ends up getting blamed. But the network is such a rich source of data, uh, whether it's customer experience, uh, information for the line of business, customer activity, security, IT infrastructure and performance and trends. So that's part of the reason why we're having this uh, integration with Corval. And Scott, maybe you can explain a little bit more about Corval. Great, thanks, John. Thanks for setting that up. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Corval, Corval offers a suite of uh, packet uh, capture devices that allows you to grab analytics off of the network. Um, we've been around for about 15 years. Um, we are currently, if you kind of take a look at our customer base, we're currently monitoring about one trillion transactions a day. Um, and just to kind of a sense of you know who we're installed in, you know, top 10 of the top 10 global banks uh, rely on Corval. 
um, to see these transactions and to be able to look at the network and see that visibility. So really, we are sort of inside the data center. We're going to talk about today the, the two pieces together. Um, Corval, you can think of that as sort of the, the deep packet analysis inside the data center, and we're giving you that visibility and analytics for IT ops and security. Okay, and a little introduction about live action. So it's really about simplifying the networks, providing continuous insight, whether through machine learning or visualization, helping with service assurance through visibility and analysis of your application from a network perspective. And also at, at the end of the day, it's about control. So we've been doing this for over 10 years. We have you know, a thousand customers, uh, some of the largest enterprise uh, customers. And it's really about fixing visibility, increasing visibility and helping with troubleshooting. And the new network manager and their role that we see is becoming much more complex. He's the custodian of digital experience, meaning the performance of the applications for internal users and their customers for the digital enterprise. And he's the owner of this rich data fabric like we were talking about. Um, the data can help you know, biz ops, line of business, IT operations, security, DevOps. So it's not really just the network operators that can leverage this data. And it's the fabric that connects the digital enterprise. And it becomes a business enabler. So network is key to the digital enterprise, but it's also key to introduce uh, and assure new services and applications that's vital for the, uh, the next generation business. And with all this data, you end up being a diagnostician. So diagnosing, diagnosing complex problems uh, into the diverse infrastructures and systems. So you have to look into containers, microservices, you have databases, you have databases as a service, looking at different service provider that you might be transporting your, your traffic over, and a ton of SaaS and API integrations on the back end uh, security. And it's all running over a software defined infrastructure and networks. So a lot on your plate. So to help you with that, it's really about our joint solution through our integration. And it's really about the power of flow and the power of packets. And it provides for much more comprehensive detection, diagnosis of you know, issues and also threats uh, for the digital experience. So with all the complexity that we see, you know, having that breadth of coverage, but also the granularity and depth of visibility into that network becomes critical. And it's all about applications, the flows, the transaction, and the content you know, to improve user experience and the context of you know, what's happening. So providing an integrated you know, workflow with context to reduce the overhead becomes important. Uh, for network compliance, security, biz ops, uh, for other uh, parts of the business that can leverage this information. So the combined solution is really about simplifying the network, see, assure, secure. And one aspect of it is the continuous insight. So you know the usual dashboards to drill down, but you know showing in, in context of the application performance, but multi-vendor is, is very critical and being able to see it end to end across the network. And the second part of this is about service assurance. So monitoring and managing uh, conditions that might happen in the network, but being proactive about this. So you're know, leveraging technologies like machine learning so that you can predict where things might occur. With the, the scale and complexity, you need to apply things like machine learning to help the operator uh, with some of this uh, monitoring. And then enforcing SLAs and identifying sources of some of the hardest problems. And lastly, it's about control. So um, management of QoS policies and configurations to reduce uh, mean time to repair, meaning you know, leveraging this integration to you know, find and also fix the issues that we see. And then a little bit about the network infrastructure that you're managing. So this is kind of a canonical view of a digital enterprise. So on the left-hand side, you know, we have branch and campus, and it's typically multi-vendor. Uh, you have wireless and access points coming in through the branch and campus. Uh, multiple devices, mobility, also Internet of Things are driving up uh, the traffic. Video usage, just consuming a lot of that bandwidth, uh, and also uh, leveraging uh, multiple transports using the Internet and MPLS or other uh, transport services to access your software as a service. 
So we see it increasing in complexity. The Live NX solution gives you that visibility back into the branch and campus, you know, talking to all these different devices, whether it's Flow or SNMP. And then in the, the WAN section, you know, whether it's traditional WAN or SD-WAN, the Live NX product can talk to that controller to understand how that transport is working and if there's any performance issues. And on the right-hand side, you have infrastructure as a service, uh, public cloud, whether you're in, running Azure or AWS, you have VPCs and virtual networks, virtual routers. So LiveNX can you know, talk to those devices and get visibility. We also have agents that you can place into the public cloud to get visibility as well. And Corvo can apply their deep analytics and analysis capability in the public cloud, uh, just as much as they can do in the data center, which is good. And then at the very bottom is the data center. So Coral is the expert at getting deep analytics and operational information out of that through Packet and DPI. So handing it off to Scott to talk more about the data center piece. Yeah, thanks, John. So as we as we dive into the data center and dive into sort of the, the, the Corval side of the house, if you will, um, you know, we, we can see all those packets as are coming into the data center from the WAN. And there are some unique capabilities that we do offer that allows us to sort of see uh, network infrastructure. Uh, one of the things is we can actually uh, see latencies across infrastructure components. So whether it's a load balancer or a firewall or an entire sort of um, security stack, uh, Corval can begin to look at that in a very granular view to be able to see exactly what's happening across that. Um, you can also begin to decode and look at you know, layer seven uh, database, so your um, SQL calls. You can also take a look at your web um, and your applications running across that by using our our rich decoding uh, engine to be able to look at, um, you know, gets and posts and those kinds of things. So it really gives you a very good understanding of the data center, the services inside of that data center, and sort of that detailed uh, type of view. Um, one of the things we'll talk about uh, later on in, the, in the, uh, the webinar is our ability to do the microburst analysis, which is something that is, you know, unique to sort of packet instrumentation. And in order to see that level of, of detail, um, we have to see the, the packets themselves. Those are some ways that we can sort of enhance that live and next view, which is that higher level view outside of the data center and be able to pinpoint exactly what's happening inside the data center. So let's talk about security for a second. So our view here with the live and X and with the Corval um, uh, integration here is to really adopt a you can't hide policy towards network security. So if we sort of build the bullets here on the left hand side, we have the um, sort of live action pieces where there's some unique views that we can get in regards to what's happening in the branch. Uh, things like uh, the endpoint visibility to understand who is affected. So for example, if a malware, um, if a, a particular client is infected, uh, the LiveNX product can begin to understand and create reports on, hey, who have I talked to over the last 24 hours? Hey, when did this, when did this start? Uh, hey, I'm talking out to a known uh, bad domain uh, directly through the internet and I'm not coming back to the data center. So there's some, some great things there that uh, LiveNX can bring to the, to the table in regards to uh, threat hunting. Uh, we can also do, it's kind of interesting, historical traffic replay, which is kind of neat because, uh, and I think John will jump into this a little bit later on, but you can kind of begin to sort of see um, this traffic as it replaced to get a better understanding of how this uh, took, took place. Now, if we go inside the data center, one of the unique things that Corval uh, does allow you to do is to apply threat intelligence to the analytics we're getting um, inside of the data center. What that means is, is that we're taking uh, things like emerging threats or eyesight partners, uh, any sticks or taxi compliant uh, 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 report, and we can begin to match up those indicators from inside of the data center. Uh, also, since we're seeing the packets, we can begin to do things like artifact extraction. And what that means is I can begin to pull down an actual file and see the file that the user was actually trying to access. I can send that file, for example, to Wildfire with Palo Alto and say, hey, what do you know about this particular um, file? So my, my sandboxing strategies are beginning to be um, entertained here. And since we have the full you know, payload visibility, I can begin to sort of, sort of recreate and grab those artifacts and let the uh, security analysts be able to do the things they need to do in order to uh, mitigate uh, that, that risk. So what does this joint solution sort of do for you? Well, one of the things is that you know, this best of breed approach is really a great way to go. Um, you know, the, there are certain certainly other vendors in the industry right now that are sort of these big, you know, Walmarts of the, uh, of the industry. They have a ton of suites, these huge, these huge suites of, of products. And 
what we what we uh, found here in, in sort of putting this integration together is that really you can take two industry leaders with um, live action and Corval, and we can really create some contextual integrations to allow you to have the best of both worlds. You can see the Gartner quote there on the right hand side about uh, that typically a lot of times uh, vendors are sort of one sided or the other and they kind of bolt in their pieces here. So what's kind of neat about this this integration that we'll show you here in a second is that you, you again you have a a rich depth to go into uh, live action, you have a rich depth to go into um, a Corval. And look, one of the challenges is, is really about instrumentation. Uh, you know, John mentioned it. I mean, the, uh, the complexity of IT is exploding right now. And picking the right, correct instrumentation for the job is critical. And it can't just be one, one thing. It has to be sort of a mix of different things, whether it's SMMP and flow, whether it's packet data, um, or all of the above. You need to, each one has uh, strengths that we can go after, and we can begin to um, go after specific uh, problems uh, that you're trying to face every single day. Um, leverage what's available, invest in the rest. You know, I think that uh, well, what, what's neat is that with, with the uh, live action product here, you have, you have built in uh, components on the network infrastructure that allow you to sort of turn on and start collecting data off the network right away. And then uh, if we're, there are holes, if there are um, areas where we're concerned about, we can invest in those areas uh, with maybe a packet capture appliance to be able to see uh, into those uh, pieces. And lastly, don't go it alone. And really what I mean by this is that, look, the, the amount of flows is exploding. The amount of uh, the data rates are exploding right now. Uh, you have got to get your head around a comprehensive solution to be able to visualize all that data on the network uh, because, you know, still the network gets blamed. And so they're going to be coming to you uh, to, to troubleshoot issues. And uh, we need to make sure we can, we can see and we can basically have the data to back up um, our hypotheses about what's happening for end user degradation, um, security threats, and, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. And uh, John and I have prepared a couple of workflows to kind of show you how the two solutions working together uh, work. So uh, we have three different uh, scenarios we're going to go through. The first one is going to be we're going to start in the data center and look at troubleshooting a voice call. Uh, then we're going to look at the WAN and sort of uh, see where we can go in troubleshooting uh, WAN connectivity. And then lastly, we'll kind of finish up on, uh, on security. So uh, everybody should be seeing uh, my screen here. And what we're looking at right here is a dashboard inside of the data center. And I'm looking at different uh, network services inside of that data center. So uh, things like my VoIP, uh, my, my, my VoIP calls, uh, DNS, uh, looking at uh, authentication, looking at um, LDAP. You can see here how we're trending on different KPIs that we're sort of looking in here. So this is really sort of that at a glance view that shows me um, exactly how well a particular service is running inside of that data center. Uh, most of these things, quite frankly, are transparent to the users. Uh, if they know uh, that there's something out there that's um, causing problems with DNS, uh, we haven't done our job, right? So we wanna make sure that everything is running um, smoothly. There's several different ways that we can actually come in. So let's say, you know, Sally from accounting calls up and she says, I had a, a bad experience in regards to a VoIP call today. Um, you know, what, what happened? Uh, there's several different ways to be able to query and start that investigation. One is to simply come to uh, the Corval solution and we can begin to start to um, type in a, um, a caller ID or we can type in an actual, um, you know, um, who they called so I can search for that. I can also go through and take a look at things just at a sort of a global level sort of understand exactly how things are going uh, from that global level. I can also begin to look at failure codes. So a lot of times there's a specific failure codes that we know that cause problems, either cross vendor support or other things. I can drill down into a call um, that way, or I can even just come in here and look at, you know, poor, looks, looks like I don't have any poor uh, calls going on, but I can just sort of drill down into um, just uh, th those pieces here. So let's, let's drill down into one of these uh, failure codes and we'll go ahead and, and take a look at that particular call. So here I have a more detailed view of that specific call. I can get things like, you know, look at the call quality over here. But really what I'm interested in down here is sort of our decodes and sort of our ability to sort of look at and be able to understand exactly what's happening for that particular call. So here I have a, 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 a message and this message has uh, specific things. I can see codec information, I can see uh, my, my markings, I can see all those things that are in here. But one of the things I wanna kind of do is sort of, I wanna be able to visualize like, did this call set up correctly? Did it actually connect out to uh, the different pieces that I want to connect out into? And so one of the things that we can do is we can actually, with the Corval solution, if I go into my voice over IP, I can actually generate um, a, a ladder diagram. So 
So this diagram is really that call that I just chose, and it's looking at all the connectivity across the call managers, it's looking at the different handsets, and I'm seeing all of the individual messages um, that are going across. So this allows me to understand, okay, um, I initiated the call here. Yes, we responded back. Um, we basically went, uh, went down to the, the handset here. Um, I have the communication between all those pieces. So I, I have a full accounting, uh, frankly, of this entire uh, phone call, including the signaling, um, that allows me to understand what the actual MOS was um, for that particular uh, phone call. And at any one of these uh, sort of points here, I can sort of drill in to get additional detail. So for a first level support personnel that just did, needs to know, hey, did this call happen? And was it set up in the appropriate way? This is a great way to be able to do it. And I'll show you something else here. So with the Corbel solution, you're only ever a couple of clicks away from the packets themselves. So one of the things that I can actually do is I can actually download uh, the PCAP for this particular call. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because I can begin to sort of uh, attach this downstream. So if I'm the uh, level one support personnel and I'm seeing this particular call, I see something interesting here, an error message or something that that's coming up, um, I might go ahead and download that, that, that PCAP, attach it to my, uh, my ticket, and then send it down to my Tiger teams to be able to uh, uh, investigate uh, further. So it does allow me to essentially sort of wrap that up and encapsulate uh, those calls. Um, and now I have a, a record of that bad call uh, sort of uh, going, um, uh, going through there. Now, there's also some things that we can do with LiveNX. So one of the things that I want to sort of say is, look, I don't necessarily see this call in regards to uh, the branch itself. So, you know, since I'm sitting in a data center, they may be collecting out to a hybrid voice service or some other piece out there, and I want to be able to see what that happens to be. So we've created an integration that allows you to actually query uh, live in X. And, and let me uh, sort of refresh this so you can see this, this sort of come in here. But what ends up happening is that I go to live in X and I say, hey, um, you know, what do you guys know about this, this particular IP address? And what we'll get here in a second here is sort of a painting, a topology painting um, of those flows um, as, co as coming from the LiveNX product. Now, what's great about this is that me as a, as a user, as I'm mixing this data together from the inside of the data center to the outside of the data center, I can begin to sort of uh, click on things and I can kind of see exactly, okay, here are the applications that that particular uh, host is talking. Uh, this guy here is talking uh, to a Citrix. I can see how much of that data is, which direction it's coming from. So this does allow me to essentially sort of walk through and sort of see uh, this, 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 this data. But really, I kind of want to get a little more detailed on here. So I want to see exactly what's, what's going on here. So one of the things that, um, that we can do is to uh, sort of go back into uh, live action. So if I go ahead and um, uh, highlight this, I can kind of view and go back into uh, live action. So what happens here is that if this IP address is associated with a site, um, I can click on it and then we, we, we land in the live action site view. So here we are from that IP address that we see in that the live action view. So, so John, I wonder if you could kind of pick it up from here and kind of show everybody uh, what kind of things we can troubleshoot from this from this view. Thanks, Scott. So from the live NX side, you know, we could look at the Austin site and just from a high level, we could look, you know, look at using NetFlow that, uh, data to see what kind of traffic we have in terms of DSCP markings, but also from a deep packet inspection perspective out in the branch, what kind of applications that we have, uh, inbound, outbound, uh, source IP addresses, destination IP addresses. So at a high level, we can tell you know, what's happening uh, at the Austin site. We can zoom this out a little bit here to a geographical view and see Austin and also in respect to all the different sites out there as well. And then you can look a little bit more in detail from an application perspective where we can see voice over IP and some of the performance issue from a dashboard view uh, what's happening with uh, the voice of IP into Austin. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail using our engineering console, so I'm gonna switch views. So here we're looking at the WAN from a logical topology perspective. So we have all the different sites connecting over MPLS back to a data center, and, and here's Austin in the bottom uh, left. And you can see all the different connections, how it's actually uh, interfacing to the WAN, we could look at the interface, the inbound outbound bandwidth uh, showing here. And then we can overlay this with NetFlow information. So this is all the flows that are going in and out of Austin and all the different sites back to the data center. And we're looking at that voice over IP problem. So I'm gonna convert this flow back to performance. And we can gather using deep packet inspection information 
uh, performance of certain media voice video. And then we could look at the metrics associated with that as well. So I'm gonna click on this particular flow, double click, and it gives us the information from NetFlow perspective, that particular traffic. So we see some real-time protocol happening here. We have you know, drops occurring, and we can see some uh, jitter happening here as well. I'm gonna double click on this particular traffic, and it'll figure out the actual path it took through the network. So you can see that it went through the data center, uh, MPLS data center core, and then back to Austin. And what we're doing here is we're correlating information from various sources, whether it's SNMP or NetFlow, and putting it into one easy to see view. And you can click on any portion of this and you can bring a report, but right off the bat, you can see that the packet loss is increasing. And we can see that there's also some QoS policy happening on the Austin site. And the orange indicator means that there's uh, potentially some QoS drops happening. So we wanna investigate that and we can project this back into the topology. So it correlates back the path and the actual uh, issues that we're seeing. But we'll wanna highlight the Austin WAN interface and we know there's some congestion uh, here and we'll switch over to the QoS view. And let's drill down and look at what's happening. So right off the bat, you know, using the instrumentation in your edge devices, we can see deep packet inspection, you know, application traffic like YouTube, Salesforce. But once the QoS policy is applied, we can actually see the performance of the queues uh, going through that network. And you can see that the voice class is having some issues. So the yellow indicator here means that there's drops happening. We can drill down further into that and see the actual um, drop rate. But with it live action, we can actually read the configuration of that device. So we'll load up that configuration and look at it. Uh, obviously we have you know, pretty low bandwidth here, but we can adjust that. And we build a model of the configuration in our software and we can actually fix that within the device itself. It puts the right no commands in the right place since it's not a template based um, uh, configuration. It's actually how a uh, CCIE would type it because we know all the different rules of how to do MQC QS policies. So we can use that to fix that. So it expedites you know, finding issues using the instrumentation in your network and then resolving issues that are related to quality of service. So it makes it very easy. So I'm gonna switch gears and do the second use case, which is about the WAN. So how do you understand what's happening with your different branch, campus, data center across WAN or SD-WAN. So let's look at it from the web dashboard perspective first. So from a dashboard perspective, we can show you the different sites in a geographical map widget here and all the different performance. And we can give you metrics related to the WAN in terms of utilization by site, application and service provider. And you can drill into any of these components. But if you're running SD-WAN, for example, it gives you an extra set of metrics that's very interesting. So from a service provider perspective, we can give you the actual performance of that provider. So things related to uh, loss, delay, jitter. And you can see that you know, here the MPLS has a certain higher delay than internet, which is kind of unusual. But you can also look at this data from like an application group perspective or from a site perspective as well. So it gives you a pretty good uh, rich data set. So how do you uh, do exploratory analysis across your WAN? So this core diagram allows you to see from a perspective of bandwidth utilization, inbound and outbound to all the different sites. So it's a good way to like understand, you know, who's consuming the most traffic, uh, who's sourcing the most uh, traffic as well across your uh, WAN links. And this will work across SD-WAN or uh, WAN. And if you're interested in a particular uh, site to site in much more detail, we can drill down into a particular site. So let's just look at Tokyo to Sydney. So when you drill down into Tokyo and Sydney, what we do is using NetFlow and other data sets, we could look at that pipe and we can break it up into multiple uh, dimensions. So the first dimension is by application. So this is the top applications that are traversing that pipe. What marking is it using? And then what transport it's using? 
and then what's the uh, is there any performance issues so we can correlate information from SD-WAN or from other metrics about uh, application performance and tell you in a simple view uh, what's happening and for example I'm just going to look at VoIP here and pick that and then we can look at this VoIP traffic and look at it over time. So we'll see what happens. So right now it's running over MPLS, it's having some critical issues and it switches over to the internet and then it might switch back. No, it's not, okay. So it, the SD-WAN controller is making decisions based off of the voice over IP performance, which transport it should take. So this is actually showing you how that policy is working. So it's very important when you deploy SD-WAN to understand uh, those types of um, metrics. And then you could drill down into like a service provider and we can provide you all the different metrics about uh, latency jitter, packet loss. So this is actually showing you know, traffic that's going over MPLS and then switching over to the internet. Uh, and it's based off of performance data. Uh, for here, it's actually the packet loss. So on the MPLS, we saw that packet loss increasing. We can actually give you a measurement of that. And this will be good for you know, verifying your SLAs, uh, for example. So it gives you a good understanding of what's happening, but let's go to the engineering dashboard real quick to see a little bit more detail. So from here, we could look at all the different uh, application traffic across your WAN, and then we can you know, see uh, which type of applications are using more traffic, what's going back to the data center, but looking at it from a performance perspective, you know, we can kind of see uh, Seattle, Austin, you know, having issues and it's all going back into the data center. So at this point, you know, uh, we could leverage the Corvo capability to, you know, really understand in depth what's happening in that data center. So I'm going to pass that back over to Scott to give us a little bit more detail on the data center side. Yep, thanks, John. So now that uh, John has identified the uh, the data center as sort of an issue here, I want to kind of take a look at the same problem from the inside looking out. So what we're looking at right here is the Corval Global Site um, Overview. So here it has all of the different sites that we have on there, um, you know, very similar to what uh, what uh, John just uh, showed us. But there's a couple of key differentiations here. One of it is, is this over here, this microburst uh, bitrate. Let me change this to 24 hours so we can get a little bit better um, uh, view of this. But what we're doing is we're able to sort of understand the microburst live real time and, and sort of compare that to average utilization um, metrics. So for example, over here, I just have the bit rate. And I, my bit rate never goes above, let's say, you know, um, you know 30, 30 uh, megabits per second. You know, on off hours, it kind of comes back down again. But really, my, my microburst is in a gig um, uh, over here. So I can see those pieces over what, well, what's happening? Well, it's that it's that very fine detailed view, that um, that depth, if you will, from the breadth and depth that John talked about earlier. The Corbel solution allows us to see this data in a little bit different way. It allows us to begin to troubleshoot. So how we would troubleshoot this is really pretty simple. Um, if we see a site that we want to go after, um, we can kind of filter this view to kind of just give us, um, you know, just that uh, type of view. Let me go ahead and apply this filter here real quick. Uh, so now we're looking at just one one site, and I can clearly see. Um, you know, issues in regards to retransmissions. Um, my round trip times are kind of going all over the, all over the place here. Um, I can then drill down into um, this view and look at uh, uh, link utilization. So I'm just going to go through and sort of look at uh, link utilization here. Uh, this link utilization just lets me again see this, uh, you know, kind of view here. And again, you can kind of see pretty clearly what's happening. Um, here's my utilization um, outbound. We'll just kind of keep uh, an eye on that, that side for right now. Here's my loss percentage over time. And here's my microburst. Now, so this, this view right here is a very fine-tuned view into exactly what's happening on the network. And very clearly, there is something um, on that link coming from the data center that is constantly sort of in the 400 megabits per second rate. We can see that across the whole thing, and it happens throughout the entire day. So, so now we got to find it. So down here, I have my top application. So, you know, John talked about DPI and sort of understanding different applications. This is a very similar view to sort of see that. But what I want to point out here is that as we drill down into the data, this is actually going to change. So right now, our top application going across the WAN is HTTP. I can see some SMB and some other, other pieces here. But uh, keep your eye on this culprit right here, the servicing culprit that uh, doesn't seem to be at first glance uh, an issue um, as we sort of drill into the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down into uh, the data itself. And here we have 
um, sort of a very uh, 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 specific view, a five-minute period um, of that um, of that link. And here's the list of the applications that are on there. Now, look, I'm going to drill into one of these um, microburst spikes, and I'm actually going to um, you know sort of continue to drill into this so that I can begin to see exactly what's happening. So look look at the way that the the applications begin to sort of change as I drill into these individual pieces. And one of the things I want to kind of see here is I want to actually want to see the, the the frame or the shape of the of the microburst and be able to to, to determine if it's something that um, that I care about or not. So very clearly, um, we're now at 436 um, milliseconds. Um, I am you know way past uh, sort of um, you know um, a minute or even 30 seconds or those kind of things. I am I am definitely got the micro uh, microscope out. We're looking in there, and very clearly I can see the server sync thing um, as my top um, application during that microburst event. So that's the culprit. Like that is the thing that's coming from the data center that's causing um, that that packet loss. Now I want to be able to check a little bit about the policies and whether or not those those packets are actually shaped. And again, here's another example of a couple of clicks and you're right at the packets within the global solution. Here I have the individual packets here that we're kind of seeing there. So I can, if I want to, I can sort of see all the flags, all the header information, all the sort of uh, default things we want to be able to see here. Or what I might want to do is I might want to come through here and basically um, sort of filter this uh, by um, you know that server sync data and let, let's, let's see if we can see the markings from that so let me go ahead and sort of apply this and I'm going to just filter these packets for just uh, that one um, application and we'll kind of see uh, you know what kind of things we can we can view from that so here's that server sync of piece here so if I go ahead and, and pull this open I can look at my marking here so clearly uh, that is not what we want right so this is definitely um, you know, uh, something that needs to be shaped and needs to be a best effort type of queue uh, somehow so we can sort of, you know, get it out of those other things. So this is a, this would be a good example of where I would throw it back over to, you know, to John and maybe create a policy for me uh, from those, uh, those different pieces. But this is a, you know, another, another sort of uh, in interesting view into uh, that data from the, uh, from the Coral perspective. So uh, the last workflow that I think we wanted to go through is sort of a security workflow. And so we will, uh, sort of continue with uh, sort of inside of the data center, if you will. So one of the unique things that the Corbel solution allows you to do is it can actually, uh, we can actually add threat intelligence feeds uh, on top of the packet data. And what that means is that uh, we ship with uh, emerging threats. Uh, we also can include ISI partners. There's, we can also include any sticks or taxi compliant uh, feed out there. What this does is it turns that packet analytic data into indicators. I can actually begin to understand those patterns in my data center, uh, the threats of those patterns. And then what we do is we put a score um, on those indicators and I get uh, this view, which gives me the highest risk user authentication that's happening inside of my data center. I also get the highest risk host in the, the data center itself. So I can see uh, infected uh, servers, infected entities within that, uh, that, that, that data center. Here is a list of all the different indicators that we kind of see there. And I can drill down into any one of these or I can uh, myself um, sort of bring to the top or ignore um, indicators that, that I care about. But let me show you what happens if we drill down into this. So I'm, at, so I'm saying to the tool set, listen, I see this high risk user. Uh, where was this user and what types of communication uh, was happening uh, because of this user login? So what this view is uh, right here, if we can uh, scroll down a little bit, is I get a, a list of all the different uh, conversations that I, that I can see for this particular user. And so there's several things that I can, I can kind of figure out from this, right? So I can see uh, them going to mail right here. I can see them coming out to getting some HTTP data right here. There's some SMB data um, in, in here as well that I can kind of see. This is a complete accounting of what that um, user uh, did. And one of the things that we can begin to do, because I have the packet data underneath, underneath this, there are some interesting things that I can get. One of them is to basically download the file. So artifact extraction, I can actually download the file that that person was downloading. And then I can send that up to Wildfire and say, hey, what do you know about this file? Or I can send this to my sandbox um, in there. Or maybe I just want to see what the heck they were doing. Um, I can begin to grab that, that file and, and, and manipulate that file. There's also several things that I can do. I do have some integration with other sort of security vendors that are out there. Um, so for carbon black, for endpoint monitoring, um, I can start an investigation. So again, the idea there is that, uh, you know, from the data center perspective, I can kind of 
grab some data off of the uh, an agent, if you will, um, and see what's happening from the process level on, on the OS. And then, you know, of course, uh, we're, we're here to talk about our integration with, um, with LiveNX, and so we certainly can do that as well. So one of the things that I really can't see very well with the Corval solution is what's happening in the branch on that, uh, that, per, that person's PC. So if, for example, mal malware was infected on, a, on somebody's laptop in, in a branch location, for example, and that malware was connecting through the internet out to uh, China or Russia or some other sort of known threat, uh, I don't necessarily see that. So I need to rely on um, LiveNX to sort of complete the picture, if you will, and tell me what's happening in, in those views. So again, as we as we drill down into a LiveNX, and we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll paint this again just so you guys can see um, you know, what, what, what happens here. You know, I get a, a topology view, right, of uh, the connected flows and things that that person is, is talking out into. Now, I might want to do a couple of different things here uh, instead of just sort of looking at the traffic itself. So I might want to actually begin to sort of um, walk, if you will, uh, this tree and be able to see exactly who's connected to, to what. So, for example, if I'm looking at this and I'm looking at, for example, this uh, Outlook web service, maybe the malware did come from you know, from an email, um, uh, 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 an email that came down to their desktop, uh, or maybe there is an SSH session in here that um, I see connecting out to um, a, a server that really shouldn't have, out, have have in there. I can actually begin to sort of um, filter this for that. So if I look at, for example, let's say this Outlook web service is the application that is sort of the transport, if you will, of that malware. I can then begin to sort of uh, repaint uh, this view, and I can say, hey. Uh, just show me from this infected PC um, all of the other uh, uh, machines that are communicating uh, using that same protocol that I've deemed as uh, being the suspect here. And then we can begin to sort of see uh, those views on there. I can also, if I want to, although it won't be interesting if I, if I click on this guy, but I can actually re uh, re uh, center, if you will, the IP address. So for example, if I wanted to recenter this IP address and say, okay, what's coming from this IP address, um, I can do that. I think this one doesn't have anything uh, basically out there. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, pull this out. Um, so I, I don't I actually don't see uh, anything downstream from that particular um, IP address, but we can sort of um, you know get those type of views. So if I see something interesting in here, I think again one of the nice things that I would probably do is I would say, um, hey John, what? How can you characterize for me in the LiveNX product? You know that client PC in the branch. What types of reports can you do that shows me exactly what that what that thing has been up to over the last several hours or last several weeks? So from the live and X perspective, you know we can provide you situational awareness from a cyber perspective. You know what's happening. So this is all the traffic, and I'm going to enter one of the um, IP addresses. But before I do that, you know we do have a big data backend to be able to you know absorb you know millions of flows, you know billions per day. And this is all the different traffic within a certain period of time, but we have four patents in this area of you know, how do you analyze and visualize, and including a machine learning backend to like be able to show you the pertinent information. Now I'm, I'm gonna enter this specific IP address. And since we have a big data backend, we can store all the raw flow information so we don't lose any granularity. And we do it very in a very compact and efficient format. So you can save this for months, years, if you wanted to. So this is that particular IP address that Scott was looking at. And we could look at it from the data center side coming back and through the MPLS cloud into the Austin site. And we can actually see uh, the PC generating that traffic as well. And you can right off the bat, you know, do some reports off of this. So I could look at the address pairs and then I can see, you know, what countries it's uh, going to and where it's sourced from, uh, what are the different uh, parameters it's using. I can pivot this to look at it from like an application perspective if I wanted to. And you can see all the different dimensions that we provide. And you can drill down into any of these and we can give you all the raw granular information that you want. But one of the interesting things you can do is we can look at this in a real time view, what's happening within this device. So this is all the different uh, applications and traffic flow going through the device. It updates every 10 seconds. But I'm gonna look at only that particular IP address, for example. So this is that IP address in question. We're looking at it from an application perspective, looking at it from the IP address uh, perspective. And for forensic analysis, you know, we could go to the playback view and we could go back to any point in time 
and then we can play this to see what the actual behavior of this is. So I have this uh, IP address entered, and I'm gonna play this. So we can look at it from an IP address perspective and let it play. So it's talking to you know, different IP addresses over time, and we're doing it in 30 second uh, frames, but we could do this in like a one hour frame. So you can imagine in, you know, uh, in a one minute period, you can see the whole entire day and see exactly you know, who did it talk to. And it could drill down into you know, more specific information as well. And then if you, for um, incident response per, uh, perspective, you know, if there is nefarious traffic and you needed to do some type of action, you know, we provide the capability to create ACLs right off of the, uh, the device as well. So if you wanted to block this on the firewall rules or ACL rules at the edge device, we can insert that in. We can also create an ACL and using a policy-based uh, route which we have an editor for to actually reroute that traffic to like a better sensor that you can analyze that nefarious traffic in more detail. You can also put it into the quality of service so that you can actually shape and delay that traffic. So you don't want to let the attacker know that you're onto them, but at least delay it. So it gives you more time to understand the behavior and what they're really after. So it gives you a good perspective from the overall network view, you know, what's happening, and you can do exploratory analysis at scale over your entire network. So this is, uh, I think, the end of our demo. So we're going to be wrapping up, and I'm going to hand this back off to Scott for the wrap up. Yeah, thanks, John. So I think, look, I think that's fantastic. So uh, I think the, for the folks of you that have been on the web, webinar, thanks again for, for sharing this time with us. I think what we've shown you here is really a, a truly unique, integrated a solution between the uh, live action, Corval, providing you that breadth and depth of, uh, of, of views across the network. You know, invest in instrumentation, right? I think that the, the idea here is to make sure that there are, um, you know, no stones left unturned. You have the ability to then sort of be uh, judicious about uh, seeing the visibility across the entire network. And, um, you know, it does take different types of instrumentation in order to get that's that level of visibility and that depth of visibility that, that you need. And look, we, we think these two solutions together work great. So the, the integration between the two, I think that you've seen today is, is sort of the beginning of this. And we can sort, uh, certainly um, you know, enable you to have a best of breed approach when bringing in you know, two experts in the field uh, to be able to look at the data center and look at the, uh, the WAM. And again, don't go it alone. The, the, the explosion of, of flows, the explosion of data, um, you have got to get your head around a comprehensive solution for managing and gaining visibility into your network. Otherwise, um, you know, you won't be able to keep up. You're going to be sort of left behind. So uh, on the next slide, I think we can kind of just you know, look at and sort of sort of taking the best pieces of the of the um, you know, live NX and the Corbel solution together, you know, gives you that better digital experience, you know, better threat detection, better communications and overall better productivity. So with that being said, I will pass this back over to Fiona for questions and answers uh, um, from her. Thanks, Scott. Um, that was really great to both John and Scott. Really, really great presentations. We've had quite a few questions in the queue, so let's answer as many as we can now in the next 10 minutes. So the first one is for live action, um, so I'll ask it to you, John. What network devices export NetFlow beyond just routers? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, routers and switches definitely, but you know, security devices as well. But we're also seeing information from things like you know, SD-WAN controllers uh, providing us you know, application and, and performance information about transport. But uh, yeah, more and more vendors are, are publishing more and more information through IPFIX. And we also have agents that can actually export flow from the endpoints, whether it's Linux or other OSs as well. Okay, very good. And the next one is for you again, John. So how much NetFlow data can you store for historical analysis? So we built a big data backend for absorbing NetFlow at scale. So uh, we can store in raw format, you know, as much uh, disk space as you have. And we work with the largest enterprises. So if uh, we could do that for months, years, uh, and it's all really dependent on the storage ca capabilities, but we're very efficient and how we store, and that's how we engineered the, the backend. So uh, depending on your circumstances and needs, you know, we can adjust and you know, provide you information on how to do that. Okay, very good. 
and, and this is one for Corval. So Scott, can you handle encryption? Um, yeah, good question. So uh, the Corval solution can uh, decrypt traffic if you give us the private key. Um, so definitely we have the capability if we need to see uh, those packets. Okay, and another one for you, Scott. Um, how long is the data retained for raw packet capture? Yeah, so we have a suite of products that uh, sort of a small, medium, large, extra large. So on the small end of things, you might have um, hours or days worth of raw packet capture. On the other end, on the large, you might have uh, weeks and months. So it really depends on uh, the data rate and the type of appliance you're going to uh, deploy. Okay. And John, live action, this is one for you. Um, can you get application performance data via, data via NetFlow? Uh, yeah, you can. So... Uh, more and more edge devices and routers and switches are doing deep packet inspection on TCP and UDP data. And from that, they export information with respect to uh, latency, packet loss, retransmissions. So it's actually a pretty rich data set that you can grab from your network infrastructure. So we help you instrument so that you can get this data. And once you get this data, we'll ingest it, analyze it, do the machine learning, and then visualize it for you. Okay, and Corval, um, Scott, this one for you, Scott. Is there a central manager for the solution to aggregate the data from multiple appliances? Uh, there is. So the Corval solution does have a central manager that would allow you to connect to multiple appliances and aggregate that data to a single view, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so once again, thank you very much to John and Scott and to our audience for your participation and very thoughtful questions. If we didn't get to your question or you would like more information on live action or Corval, please contact us at marketing at corval.com or marketing at liveaction.com. And once again, thank you all very much for attending. This webinar has been recorded and it will be available on corval.com and liveaction.com within the next 24 hours.